I'm Bill Davis. This is 10 and 2. The import window shows you your drives, cards, and other digital storage locations. When you target one, if it contains a file structure that 10 understands, it will allow you to either import the entire card or drive as a unit, or if 10 understands the directory structure the resource uses, it may let you select individual files to import. This is another place where the range-based capabilities of 10 show their value. If there's a lot of junk in your field footage, and if the card or drive you stored things on, and the data structure it uses allows it, you can often eliminate unwanted junk right here by isolating ranges to import. When you hit import, you'll get a menu that lets you choose where and how to store and manage your files inside 10. This relates to understanding where you might want to store your libraries, as well as giving you a choice between referenced and managed media. Basically, this is the difference between importing all the data into Final Cut Pro 10 itself, or just pointing to where the data is stored on an outside drive, or perhaps a network. One interesting part of 10 that sometimes trips up editors is that 10 allows you to actually start working on footage as it's importing. Not understanding this sometimes results in offline files, because an editor will start an import, then jump into editing, and then sometimes quit the program before the import is actually complete. 10 will warn you if this is about to happen with a background tasks still in process warning. Experienced 10 editors have learned to use the background tasks progress indicator to make sure their imports are complete when they're working fast. If not, clips can go offline later, which can make share functions unavailable.